are so many things that have taken us by surprise, honestly. I don't even really know where to start. So many questions about what the C-section and also the spinal felt like. I was more anxious about the spinal because you hear stories about these giant long needles. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited to be filming today's video. It's a chatty catch up video where I'm answering all of the juicy questions that you have been wanting to know. If you're new here, hi, my name's Elle, and on this channel, I share my journey following an active, healthy lifestyle. My lifestyle has changed quite significantly recently, and that's because I gave birth to twins. Revy and Rue are our little boy and little girl. In just a few days, they're going to be a month old, which is crazy. And while the experience is fresh in my mind, I wanted to answer all of the questions that you might have. So I asked people on Instagram to send in their questions. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you come over and join the family and connect with me because I love to hear from you. I share updates every single day about life with little Revy and Rue on there. So I hope to see you there very soon. But in the meantime, grab yourself a drink, strap in, and let's do this Q&A. Question one is, did you feel anxious or nervous about twin birth at all? When I found out that I was having twins, initially I thought that that would mean that I would have to have a cesarean and I wouldn't have a choice in the matter. But as my pregnancy progressed, it made sense for us to try for a vaginal delivery first. And that's just because of the position that our twins were in. Based on the position of the twins, it made sense for a vaginal delivery. I was also open to it. You can, of course, elect to have a cesarean with twins. I don't think that they would stop you from choosing that. And Dave and I also had a private obstetrician. So in New Zealand, where I live, if you have a private obstetrician, you can choose your delivery. So you can elect to have a cesarean, talk with the obstetrician about your decision around that. And with our obstetrician's office, we had our obstetrician and we also had a midwife. The midwife is publicly funded, but the midwife that we chose is one that works in with our obstetrician routinely. So they had a really good relationship. So we were really, really, really well supported across our private obstetrician and our publicly funded midwife. Because we had twins, again, in New Zealand, you're eligible for a publicly funded obstetrician through the hospital, but getting to the hospital for those appointments would be such a nightmare. Right? So we were very fortunate that because we have private medical insurance, part of our costs with having a private obstetrician were covered. The thing that I guess made me the most anxious in answering your question is that because our baby A was smaller than baby B, my obstetrician told me that that made birthing them a little riskier because my birth canal would open to the size of Revy, who's our smaller twin, and then Rue being the bigger twin, that could be trickier for me to deliver him. But if you've seen our birth vlog, you'll know that an, a vaginal delivery was not what ended up happening. Our twins ended up being delivered um, by C-section. I'd love to know more about how you felt while being induced, etc. as I'm about to go down that path. I had no idea what an induction would be like. I imagined that it was going to work. That's sort of what I thought going into it. But I also, I think, knew on some level that I just needed to be mentally strong. I had a feeling that it was going to be a real mental game over and above anything physical. I understood that I would be in pain and discomfort, but I thought that if I could really try to be in, in control as much I could mentally and be as positive and re saying really positive reinforcements to myself that that would help a ton. So throughout the process, I was trying my hardest just to stay positive, to keep a really optimistic mindset and again, just go with the flow because it's a long game. <laughs> it's pretty uncomfortable. Uh, being induced. For some people, you don't really feel anything. For other people, it's all go really quickly early on. And for me, it would start, the I'd have the induction medicine, my contractions would be really intense and then they would kind of die down. And then I'd have more medicine, be really intense and they would die down. So it was just a constant struggle of going through that. If you are being induced, just remember, go into it with an open mindset and as I said, try to stay, stay as positive as possible because that's going to be really, really important. 
so many questions about what the c-section and also the spinal felt like so i'll start with the spinal and my experience with that once the decision was made to have a cesarean and that decision was made purely because when they were monitoring both of the babies and i had the monitors on my stomach they couldn't get accurate constant readings the babies were going on and off the monitor and it was just really really difficult for them to track how they were responding to the medicine so that was reason number one they couldn't confidently say that the babies were doing okay and that they were coping really well and the reason number two was it was moving slower than what they would have liked and based on the information they had from the monitoring they were able to do my obstetrician felt like the babies were beginning to show signs of distress she didn't think that they were fully distressed yet that we needed to act quickly get me straight into surgery and that's why there was a massive wait from the time that it was decided that the induction would stop and I would have a cesarean I waited all day it was so long and I was so hungry and so thirsty by the time surgery came around but um, by the time the babies were actually delivered my obstetrician said that the babies had shown signs of distress so we acted correctly the spinal and the experience around the spinal was honestly totally fine out of everything the cesarean and the spinal i was more anxious about the spinal because you hear stories about these giant long needles going into your back and who wants to think about that definitely not me but the process around it was really fine i went into the operating theater by myself and definitely if you haven't had surgery before that could be quite a confronting experience. When I walked into the operating theatre, I did get emotional and I did cry, not because I was in an operating theatre, but because I could see the two resuscitation areas for both of the twins. Even get emotional thinking about that now. And that is because, I get emotional thinking about that because we really didn't know if the twins would need any time in NICU or a special care unit and I was the most anxious about that. I was most anxious about if the babies would come out and be okay or if they needed extra assistance. And I think that the reason I was so comfortable in theatre was definitely because I've had surgeries before and I've always had a really positive experience around surgeries. I most recently had a boob job, I have an entire boob job series on YouTube which I'll link that playlist in the cards above and description box below if you want to know more about that and just as a side note I have an entire series coming about breastfeeding with a boob job and answering all of your questions about what it's like going through pregnancy with a boob job and the changes so all of that is coming once I got into the operating theater they got me onto the bed and that was uncomfortable trying to navigate with a giant belly trying to get up onto the bed wiggle my way back and curl myself up because you want to curl yourself around like you're holding a ball is what they want you to do so that your spine is open for them to be able to inject it in and first of all they do a couple of injections they do quite a few injections but you don't feel them they just do little injections to numb your back before the spinal goes in so you might feel the first one but it's honestly not uncomfortable it's more uncomfortable getting that needle put in your hand that drip that was way more uncomfortable and in fact they tried to put it, my midwife tried to put it into this hand first before I went into theatre and she blew out my vein. So my hand was like swollen. <laughs> and then I had the anaesthetist come in and he put it in this hand and he did it like straight away without any issues. So having that experience of my vein blowout was way more uncomfortable than the spinal. I completely understand if you're nervous about it, but try not to be because it honestly, like it's over and done with so quickly and you have no idea that it's going on. Once the spinal was in place, that part is weird because you start to feel like your body kind of disappearing and this warm feeling coming over you and your legs are getting heavier and that kind of thing. So that part is like a bit of a strange feeling. Once the medicine had been given to me, I actually felt super sick and I'm not a person who throws up normally. So in my birth vlog, I have wet flannels over my head. That's not because I was hot, that's because I felt really sick and I threw up a couple of times. So they gave me anti-nausea medicine, which balanced me out. And once I had that, I was 
totally fine. Once the spinal was in place and I was all positioned on the bed, they got Dave to come in and that was the best thing seeing him. I didn't love being in there by myself. I had the support of my midwife, but I really wanted Dave there as well. So seeing him was really good. And then we were I was told that we were starting the C-section. Because I was lying there, I couldn't see all of the people in the room, but there were a lot of people in the room and Dave saw them all and we were warned that there would be a lot of people there. Um, and I think for him that was kind of intimidating. But for me, I had really no idea. I could just see the screen and in New Zealand, I'm not aware that you can request that screen to be removed, at least not yet. So you don't see anything that's going on. However, the light directly above my head was basically a mirror. So if I looked in that light, I could see everything. I just chose not to look into that. The C-section itself though was totally fine. There was no pain whatsoever, no discomfort whatsoever. The only thing that I did feel was kind of like a feeling of relief once each baby was kind of born or delivered because I guess that weight was kind of removed from my body. So I felt better and better each time a baby came out, but it was not painful. And if you are nervous about any pain or any discomfort, you do not have to be. The anaesthetist is right there beside you and just communicate however you're feeling to them. So if you're feeling anxious or sick or whatever, they can assist you with the right medicine just to make sure that your experience is, is really good and really positive. Did they let Dave do a cut on each of the umbilical cords? Did you keep the placentas? We didn't keep the placentas and Dave did get to cut the cord of Rue. He didn't cut Revy's cord, but he did say that Rue's cord was like cutting a thick rope. They were really big, thick placentas. When Revy came out, they did delay cord clamping, so I didn't get to have initial skin to skin with her. I heard her cry and they did the, the delayed cord clamping while I guess they were delivering Rue and then they took her away. So I heard her and I got to see her super quickly over the screen, but it was really hard to see her on the angle that I was lying there. Once they took her away, checked her and made sure that she was okay, she was then brought to us, which was quite a bit later. Rue, he was delivered, we saw him, he was taken away, but I didn't get to see him after that because he needed some assistance with his breathing. When I watched our birth vlog back, I could hear in the background that someone said he was a little bit limp and non-responsive, I think. And honestly, I did not hear that at all in the theater. That just went completely over my head and everyone kept that from me. They made it really like, just distracted me. So I had no idea that there was any issue with him or any possible issue with him. Dave went over and saw them working on him and he saw that it was serious but they were just trying to work on him there and just with his lungs he needed some assistance with breathing just to get his breathing under control because he was quite startled and non-responsive when he came out. Thankfully 30 minutes of being worked on he was able to breathe on his own and get released straight to us on the ward in recovery which I can't believe how lucky we are that we got to be all together so quickly and get to avoid NICU. Um, but had I known that that was going on, I definitely would have been more anxious. So I was able to be calm because I think people kept that information from me. Did you find it hard not seeing the babies right after birth because of the curtain? Yes, it was so hard not being able to see the babies right away. Having that curtain there, all I wanted to do was just pull it down to see them because you could hear the cry and they were showing me the babies apparently but I couldn't see them very clearly. That weight of getting them brought to me, well I didn't get to meet our son until I was in recovery but that weight of getting to meet Revy and having her put on me, oh my gosh that was so hard, so hard and it was so crazy seeing her face the first time. In that moment where you meet them, you can smell them, you can see them, you can hear them. Honestly, everything melts away. Any anxiety you have around the procedure that you're getting done, any worries, it all goes. I get emotional thinking about it because in that moment, you're just like so grateful, so in love, 
so relieved. It's the best feeling ever. What were the COVID protocols like while we were there? I was really nervous about going to the hospital during this part of the pandemic. Where I live in New Zealand, we're currently having a wave of Omicron cases and cases are peaking in where we're at in the pandemic. Dave and I are both triple jabbed. So we've had our booster shot. We had our booster shots two weeks before the twins were born. So by the time we went to the hospital, the boosters had come into effect because I think it takes about two weeks before they work within your body. So we felt more confident having those, but we definitely tried to avoid people because we didn't want to get COVID before we went to hospital. Once I got to the hospital, I had a PCR test done, the nose swab, which was awful, my first one, but that's okay. I think now they've moved to rat tests or the rapid antigen tests. But when I was there, they didn't have any of those available. Dave didn't get tested, which is very weird to us. But that was just the protocol that they had. And once we were both at the hospital, we couldn't leave. So we couldn't go outside for a walk. You have to stay, we just both stay put. So during the induction process, we both had to be in the hospital the whole time. And also with recovering from the C-section in the wards, we did get some things delivered. So Dave was able to go down to reception and collect those things like food. And we got some additional clothes brought in for the babies, but he couldn't like leave the hospital. I've had so many questions asking about the recovery process from the C-section. So I'm going to answer those now in this section. I just want to say that the hardest part about recovery for me personally was not being able to be up and active and moving about as quickly as I would have liked to have been with the twins. Even though I got the feeling back in my legs really quickly, I was told not to get up and move out of bed until the catheter was taken out. My operation was at 10 p.m. on Friday night and my catheter was removed 2 p.m. Saturday. So for that whole time I was in bed, I didn't move and that was really really hard for me because Dave did all of the changes with the babies um, he brought the babies to me like for me helping with feeding and that kind of thing but it was just really hard watching from my bed and not being able to get up and do things I guess so that was the hardest thing not any pain or any discomfort because I was given medication which made my recovery really comfortable it was just hard not being able to move. I was asked whether or not it hurt to have the catheter removed. Did not hurt at all, did not feel it at all. I was up and moving about as soon as the catheter was out. So they removed the catheter and then a nurse helped me have my first shower. When I got up off the bed, I was curled over because it felt so weird. It felt like I had I mean, number one, it felt so weird not having the massive stomach and the babies there with all the, the weight that I was used to carrying around. But it also felt weird, like I just had no stomach muscles. It felt like they had been kind of just taken out of me. So I started off curled up and then slowly was able to just kind of stretch out my back and stand more normally. In the shower, I basically just sat in the shower and let the water roll over me. And it was really, really nice. I wasn't in any pain, I just felt kind of weak and just didn't have the strength that I had. But I was up and moving about pretty quickly and then from there I would just get up and tend to the twins whenever they needed me. And I think just being as active as I possibly could post surgery definitely helped my recovery. I was fortunate that I wasn't in any major pain or discomfort and that's because I really keep on top of my medication. Something that I haven't shared on my Instagram even yet is that it actually turned out that I was allergic to some of the medication that I was taking and I developed a rash all over my legs, it was on my stomach for a while as well. So at three weeks post-op, I stopped taking anything other than Panadol. And the reason why I did that was purely because of being allergic to, the, to what I had been prescribed. Did the hospital suggest formula top-ups while waiting for your milk to come in? The hospital did suggest that we formula feed our babies 
we weren't eligible for any donated milk. There is milk donations for some babies available at the hospital, but for us, we weren't eligible for those. And because my milk hadn't come in, it was suggested that we have formula, which we were absolutely fine with and worked really well for us. I did start feeding the babies as best I could. So both of them, I was nursing both of them, trying to help get my milk to come in and I was also pumping as well in the hospital. My milk didn't come in properly for a couple of days so and that was just the colostrum milk as well. So having formula definitely took the pressure off knowing that the babies were being fed and that all of their needs were being met while my milk caught up. How long do you have to stay in hospital after a c-section? At the moment, because of COVID, they are trying to move people in and out of hospital as quickly as possible. So you really don't get to stay in hospital for very long if you have no complications, if that's a cesarean. We were told that that would be 48 hours maximum hospital stay. We did get an extra day because of the twins. <laughs> and by the time that those days came to an end, we were ready to go home and just kind of start our routine as best we could at home. Most comfortable clothes to wear post-op and at home. My favorite clothes to wear and my sort of uniform to wear is a nursing bra that's like a soft nursing bra that you can just kind of slip to the side and pull out your boobs if you are breastfeeding like I am. A comfy robe that you can wear over so that, or something that zips up the front completely zips up and down so that way you can just kind of move that to the side and also wearing some comfy pants i'm still wearing my maternity lounge pants which are just high-waisted really loose comfy pants and underneath those pants i will wear the recovery postpartum shorts have you been wearing a belly band support since your surgery if so would you recommend i have been wearing a supportive postpartum garment there's a really good one by, I think it's CRC shorts, which are really, really good. There's also a more affordable option from Kmart if you're looking for something on the more affordable side. They definitely help just kind of make you feel like held together and offer some additional support, which I find really, really helpful just with getting up and moving around and everything. It just kind of makes me feel more supported so i definitely would recommend them and i'll leave the ones that i have linked in the description box below how are you feeling emotionally baby blues etc honestly i'm feeling really good immediately following the birth of the babies i was on the biggest high i have ever been on in my life it was incredible the amount of love that i felt for the twins i have never felt that way before in my life about anything or as happy is joyful honestly it was like complete and utter bliss and then when we got home and the sleep deprivation hit and the cluster feeding hit reality hit it was harder it was harder but i'm very fortunate that i probably have only had one or two maybe really down days where i have cried and felt really like upset and just like i'm not doing things correctly and feeling anxious and worried and i don't know i would describe that as baby blues but also just as like new mum kind of anxiety because there's this massive learning curve and for dave and i we've done it during a pandemic time and we also have done it without the support of friends and family that we thought we would have the support of the hands-on support now that we're about a month in we've found our groove with not only our routines but also the people around us are more supportive but in those initial first few weeks it was really hard because it was really just dave and i and we were figuring it out completely on our own so i'm so thankful to have such a supportive husband who really was my teammate through that whole experience Baby blues are a very real thing and it's completely normal and completely natural to feel down or just upset or not yourself. So make sure that you're still continuing to talk to people and let people know if things aren't improving and they're getting worse because there's help available for you. Pain during and after, what restrictions do you have to follow post procedure? I really didn't have a lot of pain before or after because I was having my medication. The worst part about my recovery from my C-section was the rash, which they thought originally was due to hormones, but actually 
now. They believe it was because I was allergic to the pain, some of the pain medication that I was on. So that was the most uncomfortable part about my recovery. But I'm just able to move around, do everything normally. I just take it very, very slowly. Because my belly was so big, I had such a big bump, and I was carrying so much weight with those two babies, that not being pregnant anymore, I honestly felt like a new woman. I could move around, I could bend over, I could do all sorts of things that I honestly couldn't do when I was pregnant. At six weeks post-op, I will have my final appointment with my obstetrician, where hopefully I get discharged, that everything's all good, and then I will go and see a women's health specialist to get assessed and see what I need to do to be able to start returning to exercise um, over the next few months. I would like to include more exercise in my routine. At the moment, my exercise is just walking around with my babies, cuddling them, moving around the house, going for walks with my family, and that's perfect for me right now. And at six weeks post-op, I should also be given the all clear that I can return to driving, hopefully, at the moment. Dave drives me around. So once I have that back, that'll be really nice to have those freedom of movement back as well in my life. Last question. What do I wish that I had known before having Revy and Rue? There are lots of things that I wish that people had told me about. The cluster feeding I was not expecting, just how sleep deprived you get I was not expecting, or how hard it is to do things like, even a little bit of washing or even having a shower, all of that stuff is so hard and a massive juggle. But I promise every day it does get easier. At the start, it is super hard. Everything feels incredibly overwhelming. You don't know what you're doing and it is just the craziest learning experience. But try your best to remind yourself that it will get easier. Weeks two and three were so hard. Now that we're coming up to weeks four, Dave and I are slowly starting to feel like we are getting this and we are figuring out what works for us as a family. And that is so important for you as well because people will give you so much advice. They will tell you how they did something or they would tell you what their suggestions are for you. But they don't know you. You know you. You know your baby. You know your family. You know what's going to work for you. And even if you don't, you're the right person to figure it out not a stranger on the internet, not a family member. So try to remove those external sources. Even if they are giving you unsolicited advice, try not to listen to them. Just focus on you, your family, and just test out what works for you because I promise you will find it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it was a long one, a very chatty one. I have so many more videos coming your way. My breastfeeding journey, an update on what it's like post delivery with a boob job and how all that's going as well as day in life all sorts of things if there is a video that you'd like to see from me leave it in the comments below so that i can film it for you i can't wait to see you in the next video thank you so much again for watching i'll see you very soon bye